I have been trying to sell fake stories to newspapers. And this is one I tried to sell to the Sun newspaper. I'll just read it to you. I wrote, I was recently walking through London Soho when I spotted Matt Baker from the BBC One show on his phone in the street. He seemed angry about something, and at one point he was so angry that, to my amazement, he tried to kick a pigeon. <laughs> He had about three attempts, and on one of them, he did clip its wing. He was shouting what sounded like, die, pigeon, prick. <laughs> this didn't happen in any way. I've never met Matt Baker. <laughs> I managed to get some pictures. I was wondering how much you might be interested in buying them for. I got a reply from the Sun newspaper within two minutes. <laughs> they said, Joe, kicking a pigeon, question mark. That is pretty shitty for a one-show bloke. <laughs> it's quite colloquial for a first email back, I think. <laughs> Can you send me the pictures? Cheers. I can't give his real name for legal reasons, so I call him Rodney. <laughs> I said, Rodney, my lawyer says I shouldn't send you the full pictures until I have an offer from you as to how much you'll pay for them. I've attached a cropped version of one of the shots for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> I send that through to him. Any, any response? He replied, that's a photo of a pigeon. <laughs> Stukes. <laughs> Here's my photo of a pigeon. He attached that one on the top there. <laughs> he also attached a picture of Matt Baker and said, can you send me a picture of this man kicking a pigeon? <laughs> so I sent him a curveball and I just said, is that a picture of Matt Baker? I thought he was Chinese. <laughs> You thought he was Chinese, question mark. You mean you have a picture of a Chinese man kicking a pigeon? <laughs> I said, yes, how much will you pay for it? <laughs> he said, I fear we might be wasting each other's time. Good day. <laughs> I said, you'll be sorry when you see tomorrow's Guardian front page. Good day. Big dog in the house! <laughs> Destroy... <laughs> Destroy this cake. Mm. It's a shame, though. Most beautiful destruction wins. You have 30 minutes. Your time starts now. Moment. I know. It was a thing of true beauty. It was like someone choreographing a ballet and then <laughs> coming out onto the stage afterwards and having a shit. <laughs> well, this is a show for everyone, which means it's also a show for furious middle aged heterosexual men. Here with some straight talking, it's Richard Utree. Richard Utree. Nothing was proved. <laughs> and, and this is Alan Carr. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. It's live. Hello. It's live telly, love. Don't worry, I'll walk you through it. This is part of the show where you get to hear the views of straight people. We've finally been given a platform. You're going to hear the kind of common sense straight talking that you never see on television, apart from now when you're seeing it on television and all the other times you'd see people like me on television saying that they're never on television. <laughs> this week, in the latest example of PC gone mad, 
Agatha Christie's novels are getting republished to take out any offensive words and phrases. What do you make of that, Alan? Oh, bloody hell, it makes me sick! <laughs> sick! <laughs> Read it off the auto Oh, please. sorry. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, so <laughs> what a load of woke nonsense. Them and their lefty liberal do good in garbage. They won't stop until every Agatha Christie book finishes with a murder being committed by Sir Elton John in a vegan florist with a double ended dildo. <laughs> 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 Strong, <laughs> Strong words there from Alan Carr. <laughs> I think, I think that's clued up, but never mind. <laughs> Next, in news from Europe... <laughs> <laughs> King Charles has visited Germany. What do you make of that, Alan? Oh, bloody... Ge oh, Germany's a nice place. <laughs> off, I like... Ge oh, off, off the old okay. off the old <laughs> If there's one thing I can't stand even more than all women, it's the Germans. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, damn right. We're damn right. Damn right. We shouldn't be sending our king to visit those sausage munching, cabbage stinking, <laughs> penalty scoring scumbags. Yeah. The only reason King Charles should be going to Germany <laughs> is to drop something on him from a plane. <laughs> Ideally, oh my God. Ideally, his daughter in law. That's about Megan, that one. Not my words, the words of Alan Carr. <laughs> It might get worse. <laughs> oh, my God. Next, asylum seekers. <laughs> no, 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 no. And the government have announced plans to house immigrants on disused cruise ships. What do you make of that, Alan? Uh, oh, I haven't looked into it, really. Off the auto, <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather just keep it... Quiet. I quite like having a career. Keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible idea. Oh, what? sorry, you've got oh, no, to scroll, no, scroll no, down, scroll it's down. It's a terrible idea. You... <laughs> Off the auto uh, queue, Alan. Bye, career. Bye. <laughs> you can give that bunch of work shy scroungers a boat. Those bastards will be revving up the engine <laughs> and making for the coast before you can say, I worship Suella Braverman. I do. You might as well put <laughs> Gary Glitter in charge of an early learning centre. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, Alan, you've surprised me there. I've surprised myself. <laughs> that was straight talking, and those were definitely the views of Alan Carr and me, Richard Dutry. <laughs> Nothing was proved. Back to you, Joe. Yeah. For anyone who's ever attached a hanky to a tree wishing desperately to see me and Mo in a remake of Baywatch, your wish is about to be granted. <laughs> So what I've organised is for us to go out onto the open ocean Okay. these giant motorised M&Ms. Oh, OK, sweet. Matching with yes, the shorts. matching with the shorts. See what you've done there. You all right, guys? These are my business going, associates. Man? Don't speak to them. Ooh. I manoeuvre my mushroom, displaying the kind of nautical skill you only get from a life in Birmingham. Boat life, baby! Fast and furious, mate. Yes. Ah! <laughs> Soz, hun. This is a right laugh, mate. If you're happy, I'm happy, mate. It's I'm nice to see this. you smile. Whoa, there's some big waves out here, man. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, I imagine looking at this, it doesn't look like that choppy, but no, I it, definitely it it. feel it like I'm close to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel very aggressive in this. I ain't gonna lie. Every part of me wants to make you capsize, you know? Boasting a top speed of five miles an hour, these boats are perfect for turtle watching. Ooh. But instead, like the alpha males we are, we go full dodge em. I'm coming for ya! Whoa! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Tag your it! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> About the bump, yeah. should we sell it between us rather than going through the insurers? How much do you think the damage is? What's your no claims, mate? About half an hour. Finally, I decide to abandon the unflattering camera angle and give the British public what they want. Flesh! You know what, Mo? I think I could outswim one of these. You reckon? So I'm going to race you back to shore. No cheating! I'll give you a little head start. Wait, 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 wait! Slow down, slow down! 
<laughs> my stint as a swimming instructor finally paying dividends. Oh my god, it's very tight! Our Poseidon adventure reaches its climax. <laughs> <laughs> we towel off in private and move onwards. Oh, could my mascot come and s stand next to me, please? So, I, I need to be relaxed when I play this game. <laughs> and so, when the producers messaged me and said, what do you want for a mascot? I said, I need a masseuse. And they said, fine, what sort of masseuse? So I, w I sent them an email. I'll read you the email. I said, I want a masseuse with firm palms and soft eyes, with a melancholy, a sense of wonder, a thirst for the unknown. <laughs> they must love their mother with all their heart. <laughs> they must have once killed a gecko with a ballpoint pen. <laughs> They've tasted the crisp sea air on the French Riviera. They're an ex-lover of Charlotte Church. <laughs> They've known and recovered from the depths of heartache. They've crushed the head of a robin with their fist. <laughs> They must have warm hands, be full of love. They must make me their ragdoll and punish me from above. <laughs> they said they couldn't do that, so this is Deborah. <laughs> can, you can get going, Deborah, if you'd like. She doesn't use oil, she just spits where it hurts and gets to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's the best idea anyone's ever I'm had. I'm so for depressed a by how good it is. Yeah? Hey! Your mummy. <laughs> Okay. Rioka fueled pants pants propels us onwards to Atari, where John forces us to eat caramelized French toast with vanilla ice cream. Mm. Mm. Oh, that crack. The best. That, the crack of the outside and the creaminess of the inside. Ah, oh. five more. Five more, please. <laughs> Oh, my God. It is actually insanely good. Wow. As we're rendered helpless in the face of Pinchos Pud Paradise... <laughs> our tour concludes. John, you've changed my life. You've changed James's life. We've got to go now, but thank you for everything you've done. My pleasure. I'm high as a kite right now, John. I'm high as a kite. Come on, mate. You're... Take care, John. You too. Have fun, guys. Hello, old friend. Come on, mate. It's adios to my 5-2 and John. Bye, John. Oh, hang on. <laughs> paint the best picture of the Taskmaster. Only the paint and brush... ..may touch the mat, easel and canvas. Also, you must smile at the camera with increasing enthusiasm every 30 seconds. <laughs> you have 10 minutes. Your time starts now. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I'm right in thinking that only Joe was asked to spot. <laughs> <laughs> this can't possibly be fair, then, because <laughs> my time was taken up smiling at the camera. <laughs> Right then, I know that everyone will have worked out there's a way round painting directly on the canvas. No one is going to attempt to paint from the, that distance <laughs> because these are clever people. Yeah, you can't do long distance painting. Who would do, in their right mind, do <laughs> long distance painting? Right. So, who's first? Joe and Lolly. <laughs> with a face. Oh, that was close. <whistles> Thanks, Lolly. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. 
Thank you. Lovely smile. <laughs> can we see any more? Yes, there were 20 smiles altogether. Ah! We can see them all! I counted 16 lovely smiles and four difficult poo faces. <laughs> <laughs> Joe recently had his kitchen extension opened by the Lord Mayor of Birmingham. And that, my friends, is a rather spectacular euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that genuinely true? Your kitchen extension was opened by the Lord Mayor of Birmingham? Yeah. I, I wanted a plaque on the wall of my kitchen and I thought about getting Paul Chuckle to open it because I know him quite well. <laughs> and then I thought... Yeah, I can go one better, so I emailed the Lord Mayor of Birmingham and uh, she said no, because it's a private event, so I made it public and I sold tickets to the public. <laughs> <laughs> it ended up on, like, Radio 1 ended up being the, like, the official broadcaster of it. <laughs> they, did, they did the local BBC <laughs> weather from my kitchen. <laughs> Sneaking in a hell of a slam for Paul Chuckle under the radar there. No, no, I was going to get Paul Chuckle and I thought I can go one better <laughs> and get the Lord Mayor. That's like someone saying I was going to book John Richardson and I thought I could probably get the leader of Smithwick Town Council here. <laughs> There's a new downstairs loo as well, so I was thinking Ooh. maybe get Paul to do that. A little plaque in the toilet. He could do the first shit. <laughs> he could have a wank in there, I don't mind. <laughs> to me, to you, to oh. me. To you. Oh, hello there. It's little old me, Joe Lysett. And this is the lovely little market town of Tadcaster. Well, a map of it. Can you guess which Dickensian villain makes this place his home? Oh, there's the little tinker. It's Humphrey Smith. His Samuel Smith Brewery is a local fixture on the high street. While well, he himself lives in a massive mansion just outside of town. In an example of his pure benevolence, in 2015, the bridge that links the two sides of Tadcaster, just here, was destroyed by flooding. The council asked Humphrey Smith if they could build a temporary footbridge on land that he owned, but he refused. On one side was the GP, the other the pharmacy, and so the residents had to make a 12-mile round trip to get from one side of Tadcaster to the other. Poop, poop! I'm opposite the old brewery, the headquarters of Samuel Smith, and I've opened my own pub, modelled on the Humphrey Smith ethos. <laughs> it's a dump! We're open for business. Would you like a beer in my new pub? No, thank you. no. Never mind, have a nice day. So one of the specialities here is the 6% pint. 6% beer, 94% froth. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Then, just when things couldn't get any more depressing, this fun sponge turned up. A Sam Smith's employee who didn't seem to appreciate me stealing their business model. Hello. What are you actually doing? Just having a bit of fun. We've got to watch one go, is it? No, it's true. Would you like a pint? No, I've called the police. So I've You've called the police? Yeah. Seems a bit of an overreaction. What crime am I committing? Hello. Is, it, is that your license? Yeah. Um, I've been called to a protest. Sure. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to assume this is it. Yeah, well, I'm actually opening a pub. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you're not going to arrest me. No. That's right. a relief. No, that's not a problem for me, yeah. then. I will leave it to it. Thank you. I went to see if I could go on the Sam Smith's brewery tour. Yeah. Oh, hello. Look, it's my old mate who called the police on me. <laughs> We'd just like to speak to Humphrey about Kieran and Ella and the way they've been treated. And maybe a full pint would be nice. You've got very good skin. What's your regime? Well, Jimmy... Um, last time I was on this show, I received a little bit of feedback from a, a viewer who, for legal reasons, we're going to call Brian. <laughs> I received it about 3am after the broadcast. The subject was 8 out of 10 cars. <laughs> <laughs> Just saw you on the show and had to email you to tell you you are shit. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Carr is the best thing about that show by miles. You're not even remotely funny. Here's some advice. Find another job. You're a dick. <laughs>
please consider the environment. Do you really need to print this email? <laughs> What Brian did, foolishly, is he left his email signature on from his workplace. <laughs> this is uh, solicitors. <laughs> so I replied, Dearest Brian, <laughs> thank you for your email regarding my recent appearance on 8 Out of 10 Cars, the spin-off show to the very popular 8 Out of 10 Cats. <laughs> I, re I read with great interest your thoughts on Jimmy Carr. He is indeed a fantastic comedian and broadcaster. As you left your address for your workplace on your email signature, I've had it arranged for a signed photograph of Jimmy to be posted to you to thank you for your feedback. Yours, Joe Lysa. I also put, P.S. I will now spend some time considering the environment before printing your emails. <laughs> He then sent me an email very quickly back. He replied, um, please don't send me any stuff. This is my workplace. Sorry about the last email. I was drunk, Brian. <laughs> but regardless, I sent him this picture, which is your picture with my autograph on it. <laughs> I then replied to him, my beloved Brian, thank you for your apology, but it is unnecessary. If anything, I actually owe you an apology, as I've sent what is clearly my autograph on a Jimmy Carr picture. I practised my signature on leftover <laughs> photographs of Jimmy, and there must have been a clerical error. I've had Jimmy's signature sent to you first class this morning with my compliments. Forever yours, Joe Lysa. I also put P.S. I'm still considering the environment. <laughs> <laughs> He replied, please, please don't send stuff to my office. I'm sorry for sending the first email. I was drunk. Too late, I'd sent him this. <laughs> <laughs> that is how I signed my name. <laughs> he then replied, honestly, mate, what the actual... F <laughs> <laughs> I've apologised and you're still sending stuff. This is my workplace, man. The glitter got everywhere. Oh, I added glitter to the... <laughs> <laughs> so I replied, OK, Brian, I'll stop sending you stuff. I should tell you I've finished my considerations as to the environment before printing your emails and have decided to print them regardless. <laughs> they are in the post to your offices and addressed to the manager. <laughs> so a one-word reply from Brian, shit. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Before the break, five comedians were choreographing dances to ringtones. Who's up next, Alex? Two of them picked the same ringtone, so we've edited their dances together and their names. They are Joe Adafopi and Lolly Lysit. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Because friendship is truth, and I believe you in your other way. Really moving narrative in yours, I thought. Mm. When you made that little mistake, I thought that that was a genuine mistake, but it was part of your choreography. And then I said, friendship is truth, and I believe in you all the way. OK. Mm. What do you mean, friendship is truth? Um, sort of, friendship is truth, truth is friendship. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now I see. <laughs> Joe, was there a message you were hoping to convey? It looked to me like it was a couple of guys bouncing around and then a plane flying down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what it looks like. <laughs> what I was trying to convey with it is that friendship is truth. <laughs> Joe, have you got a mascot? What have, what have you brought for good luck? I've been in show business for about 15 years, but mm. I still get imposter syndrome. I still feel like I'm not worthy, that I shouldn't mm. be here, that it's not good enough. But that all changed after I started collecting celebrity urine samples. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrities are just humans. We're all just... We're, we're all the same, really, and no celebrity is better than another. And it reminded me that I'm actually fine. And I've got all sorts here, from a sort of... A, a rich Ross Kemp, that one is. <laughs> um, down to a sort of... Oh, a lovely... Like, this is a delicious Carol Kirkwood. It smells <laughs> so... <laughs> Some of them have been donated by the celebrities themselves and some have been sourced from... <laughs> let's call them unethical GPs. <laughs> uh, this was a donation, that's Eamon Holmes. Still warm. <laughs> nice and warm. 
<laughs> oh, it's nice cool. there. It's like he's here. Yes. <laughs> Some of the ones at the back here are a bit, um, a bit more eclectic. So that, that's Des Lynam's, that's just dust. <laughs> <laughs> Des Lynam's. Um, Gino De Campo there, that's, oh. uh, that's a vinaigrette. <laughs> Alan Sugar's just broken glass. <laughs> um, well, that explains why he's grumpy. Yes, and the way he walks. That's, that's mine, that's a different sample, actually. So. <laughs> We've got one here. This is Jimmy Carr's. Ooh! Oh. There's black ink. That is. <laughs> captures your sort of soul, doesn't it? The, uh, <laughs> yeah. And your hair. Whoever's hair that is. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're wondering how much the collection is worth, I've been told it's basically uninsurable. <laughs> Joe, have you got any annoying habits? Yes, farting at the minute. So, um, <laughs> I've started doing vegan in the week. Right. So I want to be a better... Thank you for the round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> and the, it's, I have a lot of legumes. I love a legume, you know, like a, a, a nut or a pulse. I love those. And I'm having loads of them and it makes me very gassy. I'm so sorry. And I don't know if you've tried the vegan lifestyle, but the poos, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, the only way I can describe it is like shoes falling out of a loft. <laughs> <laughs> the Czech Republic consumes more beer than anywhere else in the world. Under duress, we agree to contribute to the stats at a beer spa. Welcome to our regional beer spa. My name is Daria. For some reason, Daria insists on mixing hops, brewer's yeast and aromatics and adding it to 600 pints of hot water, making a kind of Radox IPA. After this, beer skin will be soft and smooth. Can you drink the water? No. No. What kind of person drinks their own bath water? So, thank you very much. Enjoy your time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Daria. Bye. Bye. Daria leaves so as not to have to witness this spectacle. But you won't be spared it. Ooh! Very warm. Oh! I've gone quite low. I've gone quite low. Oh, there's a, there's a ledge. There's an absolute ledge. Ooh! Oh, that's nice. It stinks. Terrible. You want a beer? Silly not to, I suppose, wouldn't it? Whoa! Do you want a bloody flight with that, mate? I feel very relaxed. Do you? Yeah. yeah. I know. I feel as if I'm just doing a lot of things wrong. Yeah. All my alarm bells are going off at once. Beer in bath, naked in public. Well, don't worry, we're not televising this. Beer has been used in what I'm generously describing as folk medicine for years and claims a never-ending batch of benefits. Really? Yeah. Not good for your relationships, unfortunately. Beer. Because you stick and you're drunk. <laughs> yeah. That's page one of the marriage manual, let yeah. me tell you. Right. You know what I think would be a nice invention? Aperol spritz bath. Oh, yeah, nice. A bath of uh, tonic with some oranges floating around. Something a little more middle class. With the hops working their magic... Uh, hey. Hey. We use the opportunity to reflect on contemporary Czech politics. Hey. My case, ah! Shut it! Would it kill them to put Sky Sports on in it? Our thighs now cellulite free, but our livers know better. We call time. We finished it! Whee! Legends! Legends only! Hi, Joe. Hello. You look nice. Thank you. I thought I'd go low-key today. Score the best goal with this plastic bag. You may not handbag the bag. Yeah, it's like a handball, but with a bag. Oh. Most skillful, fastest and fewest kicks win. I was just trying to roll it into my trouser. <laughs> I'm just going to stick with this. That's exhausting. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, oh, look, look, look. I've got a tag on my shoe. <laughs> right, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. 
I'm, just, I'm not actually touching the bag, I'm just touching the tea. I'm not kicking, I'm dragging. Great goal, Mel. That's exhausted. <laughs> ah, you're welcome. Great start to the season. <laughs> Genuinely impressive. For me, I wish I could give extra points for the celebration. Mm. You can. Oh, OK. The London accent was recently voted the sexiest in the UK. Quite right. We're going to put that to the test. Oh, my God. I'm going to give you each something to read, and I want to see who has the sexiest accent. Susie, you're our linguistic expert, so you'll be okay. judging. Oh. OK. Joe, you're up first. This is how to prepare a roast turkey. The Brummie accent came seventh, <laughs> so let's have it as sexy as possible, please. Well, obviously, I don't have a Brummie accent because I went to a grammar school, but... <laughs> I'll try and recreate what the people around me sound like. <laughs> Loosen the skin over the breast. <laughs> By slipping your fingers in at the neck end. S spread softened butter liberally over both breasts. <laughs> Handle the giblets gently. <laughs> and thoroughly stuff the cavity. <laughs> Roast for at least 90 minutes until the juices run clear. Be sure to turn halfway through, you bastard. <laughs> We're at the Edelweiss Cooking School. What, in the side of this mountain? Hello, guys. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Johan. Hello. I'm Roy Trevi Brown. Nice Hello. to meet you. Hello. <laughs> In this fickle world of showbiz, it's always good to have something to fall back on. So we're learning how to make sweet speciality Salzburger Knockle. I'm going to have a very strong right arm. And people will think things. And now we put one spoon of sugar inside. Ooh. So if you can switch it like me and it's no more moving, then it's ready. OK? Yeah, that's ready. Well done. Thank you. All right, yours is ready and mine isn't. <laughs> I'm so sorry about her. <laughs> I don't have a lot of hand strength. I could do it with my calves. I've got the calves of a bear and the hands of a really, really small child. You need a break? Yeah. yeah that's why I came to Salzburg. <laughs> As we fold in egg yolk, custard powder and flour... I don't know if I've ever concentrated so much in my life. No. Johan drops a sweet truth bomb. The Salzburg and Ockel represents our three city mountains. Everybody do one peak. Mine's going to be the smallest mountain, isn't it? Johan masterfully shows us how to shape the knuckle, then, like a madman, places his peak vertically on a blob of cranberry jam. There is no way that's going to happen. It will. Here we go. That's it. With knuckle fast becoming one of my least favourite things, <laughs> Roisin triumphs. Oh, I should have been gentle and careful. Well done. I thought it was a quick thing. Back from the brink. All we can do now is wait nervously, staring at Johan's impressive whisk collection. I'm assuming each originally belonged to a previous victim. Go! Go! <laughs> go! God, that was a long ten minutes, wasn't it? Yeah. Can't believe I got my clothes back on that quick. <laughs> so, here we go, guys. Oh! Since we are in Austria, we put a little bit snow on the mountains. Yeah, it looks good, but it has collapsed, hasn't it, I would say. Thank you very much. Here we go. Daddy souffle. <laughs> but this is really important, this jiggling, you know? I do like jiggly knuckles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK. This feels very hopeful. It's really nice. Very light, full of air. Mmm. What a treat. That's good. What a treat. Thank you so much, we've had a lovely time. We leave Johan's cave of dreams. The oven's still on, doesn't it? The oven is still on. That's right. That was so much fun. You humiliated me, get out. <laughs> With our knuckle know-how, the envy of many a mid-tier comedian. OK, time to go across the dictionary. Come on, Joe, what have you got for us? Well, Des, um... <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I like writing letters, particularly letters of complaint. And I, um, I recently got a parking fine on Christmas Eve in Birmingham city centre, so I, I wrote this letter of complaint. Now, I, my friends say that they think I went in too heavy. I don't think I did. I wrote, Dear Bastards... <laughs> <laughs> That's fair, isn't it? I got a parking ticket in Birmingham City Centre on the 24th of December. You may be more familiar with this date's more popular name, Christmas Eve. <laughs> I was in town buying food and toys for some sick and starving children <laughs> that I look after in a local orphanage, plus a small gift for my ageing mother, brackets, some novelty chocolates in the shape of male genitalia, <laughs> actually named Cocklets. <laughs> When I return to my car, you can imagine my surprise and disappointment to find a parking ticket was affixed to the windscreen. I cried as Jesus did on Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive these sinners, they know not what they do. That's actually Easter, but I got confused. <laughs> I may have also chased your parking enforcement officer shouting, Die Judas. <laughs> I'm willing to offer, as payment, a bottle of sherry, Christmas cheer and all that. If you fail to pay within 14 days, it will be reduced to half a bottle. <laughs> if you refuse this offer, I will have to pay the fine using money from the orphanage, which will force me to starve one of the weaker children. <laughs> His name is Graham. I attached a picture. <laughs> it's actually... It's me as a child. He's a six-year-old boy with fair hair and the voice of an angel. <laughs> Support. P.S. Just to be absolutely clear, if you do not cancel the fine, I will kill a child. <laughs> <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Lysett.